Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. Hey, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I am a bit of a theology nerd, and this week is not going to be any exception. I fell into a deep, deep internet hole this week. You see, when I say theology nerd, it's not just how do you interpret the Bible and hermeneutics and, and proper biblical study techniques, which I care deeply about and love to talk about. However, on top of all of that, I love to read and sometimes, if I'm very lucky, listen to preachers and teachers from the early 1900s, typically in Britain and the United States because I don't have to translate as much as some of the great German uh, theologians. And one of my favorites of all time is Billy Sunday. Now, Billy Sunday was born in 1862. He died in 1935. Most of his teaching and preaching career started in the early 1900s, say 1920. 20 to 1935, right in there. Prior to that, he was a professional athlete, and because of it, he didn't have the formal theological training that a lot of preachers from his day did. And so he had this amazing teaching style that other people didn't have. And myself, not being a great orator either, I love to see how other people deal with it. Now, the passage that I want to share today comes out of Matthew chapter 14, and we'll close with what Billy Sunday had to say about it, which I find fascinating. The passage is actually very simple. You've heard it before. It says this, when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this place is desolate. The hour is already late. So send the crowds away and they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Now, Jesus had been teaching and there was this giant crowd and it was getting to be about the time to eat. And the disciples said, you need to send them to go get food because we can't handle it. Verse 16, Jesus said, they don't need to go away. You will give them something to eat. They said, and we have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Ordering the people to sit down on the grass, he took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked towards heaven. He blessed the food. He broke the loaves. He gave them to the disciples. The disciples gave them to the crowds. All of them ate and were satisfied. They picked up what was left of the broken pieces, the 12 full baskets. There were about 5,000 men who ate besides women and children. Now, I've taught this passage half a dozen times to my congregation and to youth groups and, and places all over the world because it's a great example of not only prayer to the Father, this is Christ himself praying to the Father and asking for a miracle, but a miracle being done. And on top of that, needs being met coupled with the saving grace of Christ. I think it's a huge example for what a church should look like and what your personal ministry could look like. And that's typically what I get out of the passage and what I share with others. What Billy Sunday got was a little bit different. He leaned really heavy into the social justice side of this passage, that is feeding those who were hungry and how that's not enough for a believer, a Christian, someone who is chasing down God's calling on their life that is not enough for us to put out into the world. And I can't say it better than Billy. So I am going to read a small portion of this sermon. Uh, and we'll put a little bit of Billy here so you know who he is and who I'm talking about. He said this, the world is not hungry for a religion of social service, without Christ. I will go with you in any and all movements for the good of humanity, providing you give Jesus Christ his rightful place. You cannot bathe anyone into the kingdom of God. You can't change their hearts by changing their sanitation. It's an entirely good and Christian act to give in down and out a bath, a bed, and a job. But it's a Christian act to maintain a school and a university. But the road into the kingdom of God is not by the bathtub, the university, social service, or the gymnasium, but by the blood red road of the cross of Jesus Christ. I love that. Billy had this massive amount of passion for those who were in need, but on top of it, he was never going to do just a service project without Christ and his saving blood being melded into that project. You know, 
for someone who's been in Christian ministry their whole life, this is encouraging and of course a little humbling because so often we see the need of a person and we want to meet it and it makes us feel good. But without the saving grace of Christ, it really is for naught. Thank you, Billy. God bless you. I hope this was encouraging to you as it was to me. We'll see you next week.